to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. This mutual walk is not a one-way street. Yet, because we so often feel that we should be caregivers, we may not know how to be care receivers. We may not even know how to ask for care. Back in the late fall of 1995, both of my parents were alive. My dad had Parkinson's disease. Now, my mother and I knew he was dying. By the beginning of December, he could no longer eat, and drinking was becoming very difficult for him. And as December progressed, breathing became more and more difficult for him. So we prepared ourselves as best as we could to accept the reality that dad would probably die in the near future. Mom continued her daily visits, and I managed to get to see him most days. At that time, I was a student at Knox College. I was studying to become a minister of <coughs> sacrament, and as a student, my time was very flexible. As Christmas approached, my mother and I made our plans to get ready and celebrate Christmas. But two days before Christmas, my mom had a massive stroke. Dad died on Christmas Day, and my mom died three days later. It was a very difficult time for Peter and I. Our son Murray had just turned three years of age, and although he really couldn't comprehend what had happened, he picked up on the sorrow and the tension in the house. And although people were very supportive and kind, when people asked me how I was doing, I replied, fine. I didn't know what else to say. Now, being an elder at my home, uh, at Rogers Memorial Church, and att attending Knox College as a student within the Master of Divinity program, I was surrounded by many people who were very experienced and very willing to give me the care and the support that I needed. My own minister, Reverend Carol Loudon, expressed her care in many ways, and she would have met me as often as I needed to talk to her. But I did not. The chaplain at Knox College, Reverend Karen Bage, would have visited with me, visited with me on a very regular basis. She was easy to talk to and I knew her well, but I didn't go in to see her. My professors, all of whom had worked in congregational ministry before teaching at the college, they would have helped me, but I didn't approach them. The principal of the college, who was our Van Cedars, he had called and had a very lengthy and very supportive conversation with my sister who had come over from England. And he would have continued to give me support that I needed, but I didn't go in to see him. All of these people who surrounded me would have made the time to listen to me as I went through an emotional roller coaster in the months that followed. But I didn't ask because I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to waste their time. I didn't know how to ask for help. Looking back, I know it would have been a tremendous help to me to have one person meet with me regularly whose only purpose was to listen to me even if I had nothing to say on a particular day or if I was inarticulate in expressing my feelings. And that's what Stephen ministers are trained to do. <coughs> to listen fully and completely without judgment and without giving advice. As Helen Dom so eloquently put it in the article to Aspire, wherever the person we are walking with is, that's where we are. Now Linda Becker, who is now a member of our Stephen Ministry Committee, remembers when her father had a Stephen minister. She wrote this about her family's experience. This is our family story as to how a Stephen minister came into our home. In 2002, my mother lost a six-year battle with Alzheimer's. After 60 years of marriage, my father was left alone. My father moved in with us, but he needed to have someone to talk to other than my family. The minister of pastoral care recommended a Stephen minister. From the very first, 
our family felt a connection. Our Stephen minister would spend a few minutes with William and I at the beginning and end of each visit. Then he would sit and chat to my father about things that were important to him. The loss of his wife, the cottage, his employment history, and the church. The church was a big part of my father's life in early childhood. The Stephen minister brought that back to my father. He gave my dad reading material which he enjoyed throughout the week. My dad had trouble with mobility, so getting to church was often difficult, but he always appeared <coughs> on television Sunday. My dad passed away in April 2004. The 18 months he had after my mom died were happier because the Stephen minister spent his time listening and sharing thoughts. This was something my dad looked forward to on a weekly basis. In conclusion, the Stephen minister helped my dad, but he also helped our family heal. He also bonded with our dog, Baxter, who to this day greets him like a long-lost friend. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the care and compassion we received to help our family through such a difficult time. I would certainly recommend the Stephen minister for any family that has a need such as mine. Having someone walk alongside us when we are going through a difficult time helps us to get through it quickly and in much better spiritual and emotional health. When Jesus was teaching his disciples about prayer, he spoke of the purpose and significance of prayer. He said, ask, seek, knock, and the door of the kingdom would open to us as God gives us the full, rich gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are reminded that God works through each and every one of us, and it is when we ask, seek, and knock on each other's hearts and doors that the door is open to us to receive healing and to receive caring. Now, the gifts which accompany the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, humility, self-control. All the gifts that we have focused on during this past year. These gifts don't change our situation. They do not protect us from hardship or shower us with wealth, but they change our attitudes and our spirits. So we are strengthened with the confident knowledge of God's love for us. <clears throat> Through these gifts, we become aware that our own self sufficiency. It is a lie that keeps us separated from one another and from God. Through these gifts, we are given courage to rely on one another and trust one another as true community is formed. All of us withstand our difficult times better when we have someone walking alongside us who we can rely on and trust. That someone becomes the presence of God to us as we become the presence of God to someone that we walk alongside with. When that someone is a Stephen minister, they won't tell you what to think or what you should do. Rather, they will help you see clearly so you are able to make your own choices and decisions wisely. For when we are given the opportunity to articulate our sorrow and our fears and our deepest worries, we see more clearly our situation and our path to wholeness. God created us to live together in community, a reflection of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in community, we are not always called upon to give of ourselves. We are also called upon to receive love, strength, understanding, support, and prayer. That is our strength as a community. It is a circle of care that reminds us we are never alone and we are totally valuable and loved <coughs> by God and loved and valued to this community of faith. Thanks be to God.